G'day all and welcome to a tutorial on my Minefield Drone Mark 1. Today I'll be putting myself in your shoes to print it up, show you how to use it, how to set it up and everything in between. So without further ado, let's get into it. Alright, first of all, go ahead and go and download it off the Steam Workshop and load it up into your projector on your printing setup. Today I'll be just using my Mark 2 printer. Make it nice and simple. There we go, it's all loaded in. Let's make sure I've got no creative mode tools, it's all survival. Let's turn the welders on and let's reverse those pistons back by that smaller velocity so we can use the other button to increase the velocity much faster to then reset this printer much quicker. Let's wait for this thing to print up. I'll then need to make a few GPSs as this is very easily used in two different functions and by that I mean you can use GPSs on the remote block to then trigger timer blocks to release each of these mines where you want or you can be in control of this thing and you can press the G menus 7, 8, 9 keys to then retrospectively drop the back, left and right of these minefield payloads. I'll show you this in this video very quickly and very easily so don't you worry about that. This is the complete tutorial like the rest of them. There we go, that's just about done. Nice and easy, 72 out of 72, turn the welders off, let's pull those pistons back a little bit, get them out of the way. Let's separate it up and let's get into control of this minefield drone. Now I've only recently added cameras to this minefield drone on the forward and the bottom as you can see. So it makes it nice and easier to dock etc etc. So let's just go ahead and dock this up. I'll make a GPS point. MD1 dock, that, sh that sounds pretty good actually. Uh, let's lock that up and let's unlock it so we can actually get freedom away from that magnetic on the connector. And let's fly over here and let's just make three GPSs, nice and easy, roll one here. GPS one right there. GPS two here. You can place these anywhere you want in the world. Just make sure that there's no obstacles on the way of the drone getting to each of these GPS's as the collision avoidance is off. So it's able to dock on, con on connectors nice and easy. Let's fly back down to the dock, connect up, and then I'll show you how to trigger this all up in the remote block. Lock it up. Let's jump out of there. Let's turn that merge block back on so I don't forget in the future. Let's get my jetpack mode. Here we go. Don't need all those. Let's get rid of that. Let's get into the actual drone itself. And let's get into the remote block. This one here. And what we want it to do is we want it to go to GPS 1, then 2, then 3, and then MD Dock 1 where it is right now. On each of these GPSs, we'll get it to drop the back by triggering that. On two, it will then drop the left payload by triggering that timer block. And then on three, obviously, it will then drop the right. Once it gets back to where it is now on MD1 dock, I want it to then start that secure dock timer to then dock back onto this connector nice and safe, nice and easy. Once that's all done, we need to, unfortunately, with this Mark 1 version, which is why there's a version 2 of the Minefield drone coming out, very shortly with a tutorial as it's already available to download. Make sure you go and hit that up. What you want to do is have your Gatling ammo there and then your canvas. And the reason why the canvas is not over here and it's on the right and the Gatling ammo is first is because when you alt middle mouse click on these, it won't automatically waste a canvas in this cargo container. So it only took the Gatling ammo. Let's do that to all of them. Alt middle mouse, alt middle mouse, and the last one over here, alt middle mouse. So if we go into the inventory and then have a look at the canvas, they'll all be full. And yet you don't find them in anything else. So we're not wasting any. It's taken all six of those out of my inventory. Once that's done, that's absolutely it. You don't need to do anything else apart from putting the activate button. And I've got a group. So if you've got more than one of these drones on the same grid and you trigger this group on the button itself, it will then activate all of the minefield drones that have that same grouped name 
embedded in the drone itself. If you only want one of the drones to then be activated instead, you just want that one activate timer there. So you can just go and set that to trigger. So if you had three of these on the grid, and I'll set it up right now, and I'll be back in one second. There we go. Just quickly, I've just added two more on there, and they're all identical. So what I've done now is with that same button here on the group, instead of it only triggering the one with this button, it will now trigger all of them. So I'll just quickly save so I can revert it quickly, and I can show you the rest of them. So with the whole button, all of them will then trigger. Nice and easy. And because I copied that first drone, it, all three of these will have the same functions to go to each of these GPS points if I turn them back on. As you can see, they're all trying to fight for number one just there. So let me just reload and we'll get back to how it can then trigger by itself or how you can fly it and trigger it yourself. All right, here we are back again. Let's just go ahead and trigger this one solo drone up and then let's follow it and see what it will do. As it should go to GPS 1, drop the back, GPS 2, drop the left, and then GPS 3, drop the right payload, and then come back and dock up nice and easy. There it is, there's the back. And these batteries have got a lot of charge. If I go into this very quickly, if it'll let me... 22 and then as soon as it will disconnect it should have about eight hours and that's from recently printing it up that's not full charge on these small batteries which is quite insane to be honest so let's just lock to this and i'll show you the battery power very quickly there you go eight hours and that's got half just less than half of the stored charge it can hold so once it comes back it'll just go back to md1 start that secure dock timer Easy peasy lemon squeezy. fantastic rooney Also, a quick tip, if your drone is surrounded by anything and it may not be able to get back to its own dock, it's very simple to just allow it to go around these items. I'll show you now, just control the drone. Let's unlock that connector and let's just fly directly above the connector or dock itself. Just name a GPS dock approach and add that like I'm about to show you just here. So it's going to go to the dock approach I just showed you. Then one, then two, then three. Back to dock approach and then down onto dock one. So all we'd have to do is just go ahead and press that button to activate it up. It will clear all of these blocks nice and easy. Head on over to GPS one, then two, then three. Back to the dock approach and then straight down onto MD1 dock just like this. So I'll skip this ahead as you've already seen this and we'll watch it on its way back. A quick tip is if you're finding the drone is missing the GPS point by way too much, just go ahead and slow its remote block down because it's not hitting it so accurately. Here we are, we'll come over to the dock approach and it will go straight down nice and simply. There we go and then lock up with that secure dock timer. Fantastic. All right, very quickly, there is also one last way you can trigger the drones and the mines yourself. Just go into the drone by controlling it, disconnecting it from the base, flying it around, and wherever you wish to drop these mines is on the G menu, seven, eight, and nine. We'll look at it now, we'll go seven, eight, and nine. There we go. Oh. So it's actually gone out of my character's antenna's range, which is perfectly fine. But it has dropped those payloads. An easier way of doing that, to make sure that doesn't happen again, is go over to a normal base, slap down an antenna and an actual control seat, and you can then fly this drone as far as you want. There we go, we'll just get that. And now you'll notice we're not using my player's antenna anymore. We're using an antenna on a large grid. So I can go almost across the world with this. Like 50,000 meters is a very long range. As always, make sure you smash that like button, comment down below on all your thoughts, and subscribe if you want to see more of all my drone tutorials coming out very, very shortly. But with that being said, stay sharp and see you next time.